this is the new Bernat twist and twirl and it's really kind of neat it's actually you think to yourself well it's shoelace material but in actual fact it's a frill that's all kind of just bunched up here but it's bunched up so that you can work with it and if you pull it apart it's almost like fishnet stockings a lot of frill is within this so I recommend a size 5 millimeter um, knitting needle something within that range in order to get it in uh, the last tutorial that I just ran with the 10 you really do need your needles to be going through these little slots on this material so let's get sh started and I'll show you how to cast on and you'll be realizing how actually easy this product is to work with so this is the Bernat twist and twirl. Okay, this is how I'm gonna cast on you may have a different method and I'm gonna leave maybe about six inches of material on the side that has the loose end and then this material is coming from the ball so before I cast on you don't want to cast it on so that it's gonna maintain its its tightness we want to actually start to open up the material just like so and when we put it on we just want to put it on to an edge Okay, so we're just going to jam it down onto an edge, just like that. And so then I'm going to take this hand, and this hand is going toward the ball, and I'm just going to just loop it up over the top, right? And then this material that I had just put on, I'm going to peel that back, so the whole thing is going to peel over top the other side, just like so. Okay, so let me show you again. So this is the frill side. So I don't want to put any more on this side. I want to keep this is considered my now my new edge. So I'm going to put that on the needle. Okay. And I just want to stay on the edging. So this is part of my frill on this side. So I want to stay over here. I'm going to put that on. You can see I'm not measuring. I'm just throwing it on. And now I'm going to peel this back. So I'm going to pick this whole thing up that is coming from the other hand and go up and over. Just like that. Okay, so let's try that again. This is the hand coming from the loose end. Just peel on. On. And then peel, peel this one back. We want a total of six to nine stitches. I'm going to use uh, six on this one. That we go, and you can see I'm getting closer and closer to the edge, but I'm not worried about that. The closer, meaning to the end of the ball. I'm going to peel that back like I did already. So if you have a different method of, of starting and that works for you, then by all means go for it. So we have now four. So there's no rhyme or science to the distance. The, the more distance you go, the more ruffled it will be. The less you go, the tighter your item will be, and as the ruffles won't be as magnificent either. So, okay, so we're on our last one, and we want to peel that back. So I'm going to do six. So now you now have six loops that are now on your knitting needles. So let me show you how to operate this material as we knit normally. Okay, to get started we're just going to slip in our other needle like we normally would. So this is like regular knitting now. We're going to slip it in and what we don't want to ever grab it and go like that because you're going to lose your ruffle. So you have to determine where is the ruffling going on. And what you'll notice is that this is the edge that seems to be clicking to the needle and this is the loose end that's creating the ruffle. So we want to continue to always stay on the edge. I always say the girls stay on the edge. So we just want to peel it back and we just want to grab on anywhere within the edge piece so that the rest of it is still loose and off and we want to knit as normal just like so so we just want to go in again okay and see this is the ruffle side down here this is the edge up here so we want to stay on the edge so the more distance I go the more the ruffle there will be so if I went down here and I reached all the way up there that'll be a gigantic ruffle. So you want to stay in about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Okay, so you don't want just one string on the on the thing. You actually want a nice generous loop, just like so. And again, just keep peeling back. So one ball of the twist and twirl will do a whole size scarf, just like you see. And once you've established what side is your edge, it's just a matter of doing it. So um, a tip I have for you is because I tend to always uh, rotate my, my knitting needles at the end in the same direction all the time, you're actually going to be twisting up your, your material. And because you're opening it up, you want to kind of keep it so that it's staying out flat so you can just open it up really quickly and knit as fast as you can, right? So what I'm recommending to you is that in one direction, just turn your your needles the one way and in the other just turn it to another. 
So, so for example, I'm going to now turn like this and come back in the other direction. But when I go back and do this, I'm now going to turn my needles then like this to keep this from actually rotating up coming from the ball. Hopefully that makes sense. It'll actually make sense once you're playing with it. Okay, we're going to start another piece here. And what we're just going to do, look for your edge. This is now my new edge. Okay, so this section, I just don't want to go like that because it's going to lose it. So you just want to stay on the edge on the other side. In this particular product, you will not see your stitching, so don't do any fine uh, work in stitching details. You don't need it because you won't see it. So just knit as you normally would. Just going down and just snip up under. Once you get your rhythm as well, you'll kind of um, loosen off. I found this once you get like past the first few rows, you get looser and things start working a lot easier for you as well. And just so stay on the edge. So live on the edge, girls, as we work with this twist and twirl by Burnett. It's a new product available on the market, effective September 1st, uh, 2011. It's a great little product, actually. It's, uh, it's going to be one of those uh, fashion accessories that you can wear. Uh, when you're going on a night out in the town, it doesn't take you a lot of time to actually work with this product, maybe two to three hours to make a scarf, if that. I have seen this scarf done in nine stitches across instead of actually um, six as well, and that looks really great as well. So um, the only difference is that if you go nine stitches across, it won't be as long if you're going to just do one ball to equal one scarf. So you got to decide what's right for you, but it's still a, a nice generous length even at um, six stitches to nine stitches across. So you can start seeing that the frill is taking shape. And again, so this is, I want to twist it the other way because I don't want this string here to get all twisted up on me. It's kind of a nightmare once that starts getting really twisted up because then you got to untwist everything in order to work with it. And uh, they call it twist and twirl, but you don't want to have to have a lot of work associated to it. So you just keep going back and forth, staying on the edge, and voila, you will have a scarf in no time. So on behalf of Bernat Yarns, as well as allfreeknitting.com, I'm your host Mikey, and I hope you enjoy the Twist and Twirl Yarn new vibe.